All right, now that we know all of our multiplication rules of exponents, we're going to talk about some division rules. We have two more rules to learn, and then we're going to do a bunch of problems that kind of incorporates all of the rules we will have learned. So let's prove these ones first before we go making rules up. This one is very similar to our multiplication rule that says if we have two things with the same base multiplied together, we can add the exponents up. Except this time we're not going to have multiplication. We're going to have division. So let's say I have x to the fifth divided by x squared. x to the fifth means that I have x times x times x times x times x. And then on the bottom, I have two of them. Now, we know from before that if you have the same thing on the top and the bottom of a fraction, they cross each other off. What really happens here is we have something like x divided by x, which is really 1. And then another x divided by x, which is 1. If we take 1 times 1 times all of these x's, we're going to end up with x cubed. So how can we get from point A to point B without writing that out every single time? Well, if you take a look at your exponents, we started with 5 and 2. We subtracted them to get 3. So here's rule number 4. Rule number 4 says if you have the same base, and it's very important that you have the same base, and both are raised to a power, you can subtract those powers. Rule number five is very similar to our distribution rule that we had for multiplication, except again, this time, it is division. So if I have something like x divided by y um, cubed, this really means that I have three of these things. x divided by y times x divided by y times x divided by y. Now we can see on the top of my fraction, I end up with three x's, x times x times x, or x cubed, and on the bottom, y times y times y, or y cubed. So this tells us that we can distribute that exponent to everybody inside. So rule number five, our final rule that we're going to learn tonight. Rule number five says if you have two numbers that are being divided, and they're taken to a power that you can distribute that power. So very similar to rule number three. Let's recap and write all of the rules that we know so far down so that we have a place where every rule is that we've learned. We'll end up with seven rules, and we'll prove those other ones also. But so far, we have five. So rule number one. So that if we add things that were the same base, multiply it together, we could add the exponents. M. And then the next one, we had a power that was raised to another power. And remember, since these ones just have a parenthesis in between them, that reminds us we need to multiply those two together. And then the last multiplication rule we learned was our distribution one. I have x times y, and it has to be multiplication to a power. We can distribute that. And then the last two rules are the division rules we just learned. So the first one goes along with number one. They are very much related. That if we have x to the n divided by x to the m, we can subtract these guys. And then the last one we learned was very similar to number three, and then it's distribution again. So if I have x divided by y all to a power, I can distribute it. So you either need to memorize these rules or know how to get to these rules. They are very important. Some of the problems will be very easy where we can just use one of these rules to simplify it. But others will need all of these rules combined, or at least a couple of them. So let's do some practice. Start off with some easy ones that just have the division rules we just talked about. Let's say that I have 
m to the 8th divided by m to the 6th. I could write all those out, or I realize that 6 of these on the bottom here are going to cross off with 8, or 6 out of the 8 on top. So all we need to do is subtract, and we're going to end up with m squared. So another easy one, then we'll incorporate a bunch of them. What if I had 3 fifths all to the third power? What this means is I have 3 3 fifths. Or I can distribute this cube to this 3 and to the 5. 5 cubed. So 3 cubed, 3 times 3 times 3 is going to give me 27. And then 5 cubed, 5 times 5 times 5 gives me 125. And there we go. Alright, let's try some tougher ones. Problem number 3. Let's say that I had x squared times x cubed all divided by x to the 4th. So if you take a look, your very top of this fraction is not simplified. Let's simplify that one before we do anything else. So we have two x's, three more x's for a total of five. And on the bottom we still have four of them. So if we do our subtraction rule that we know, we only have one x left. And we can write it as x to the first power, or you can just write it as x. Let's do another where we have to use multiple rules. How about if I have m squared to the 6th power times x cubed all divided by x to the 7th squared. So first thing I want to do is simplify these parentheses. This guy and this guy. So remember, if there's only a parenthesis separating them, we need to use rule number two, and we have to multiply them together. So I'm going to get m to the 12th here. Um, these should be m's, not x's. Sorry, guys. So I have m to the 12th here, and then I'm going to multiply that by m cubed, and then divide all that by, multiply again, m to the 14th. And then we have to simplify the top. Now it kind of looks like problem number 3. We're going to end up with 15 m's at the top, 14 on the bottom, and just like the last one, all but one is going to cross off or be subtracted. Feeling okay about these ones? Let's do two more. What number are we on? All right, couple more problems. Problem number five. Let's say I gave you 16w to the ninth z cubed all divided by 4w to the seventh z squared. So just looking, we got a couple things going on. We have numbers, we have w's, and we have z's. So let's approach them all separately. If we just look at our numbers, 16 divided by 4, that's something we can do. It would give us 4. And now let's look at just the w's. If I have 9 w's on top and 7 w's on the bottom, our rule says that we get to subtract those. So we'd end up with w squared. And finally, the last one, we have z's. z cubed divided by z squared will give me just plain old z, or z to the first power. And then before we're done, double check that we can't combine anything. I have numbers, w's, and z's. Nothing can be combined, so we're all done. Not too bad. Let's do another. How about if we had some multiplication? Let's say we had 3x squared, y to the fourth power, and then we want to multiply that by 2x, y to the fifth power. So same kind of thing. We have numbers, we have x's in it, we have y's. So let's approach them all separately. 
Remember, we are multiplying here. So if we do 3 times 2, we end up with 6. And then if we take our x's, I have two x's here, one more here. So we're technically adding that exponent. We end up with x cubed. And then finally, our y's. I have four y's here, five y's here, for a total of nine. Make sure we can't combine anything, and we're done. Let's do one more, and then we will call it a day. Hardest one. Problem number seven. W squared, x, y to the fourth, divided by 6, x, y cubed, and all of this is squared. So we can do a couple different things here. You can approach this problem in a couple different ways. Obviously, that 2 on the outside will need to get distributed eventually. But what I would do first, doesn't necessarily make it right, but I would simplify what's on the inside before I did anything else. So I look on the inside, number-wise, I only have a 6. Can't do anything with it, so I'm going to leave it. Start it on the bottom, have to leave it on the bottom. And then I have these x's. One x in the top, one x in the bottom. They cross each other off. All my x's go away. And then finally, y's. So I have 4 on the top, 3 on the bottom. If I subtract them, I end up with 1y. And then we can't forget this w squared. There was nothing to combine with him, so he needs to go on the top as well. And now all of that is squared, raised to the second power. So now when I distribute, there's much less for me to distribute too. I can do w squared, squared, <laughs> and then y squared. And on the bottom, I have 6 squared. So remember when we have a power to a power, w squared, squared, it means we need to multiply, so we end up with w to the fourth. And then y squared, I can't do anything with. 6 squared, though, I can simplify. 6 squared will give me 36 on the bottom. Double check that you can't combine or simplify anything, and in this case, we can't. We have w's, y's, and numbers, so we are done. And that's it. Done with our multiplication and division rules.